Jill, as, as far as we know, Donald Trump has turned down the Justice Department's invitation to appear before the grand jury. Talk us through the legal thinking and the legal strategy there. In his case, there's nothing to be gained because the evidence is pretty clear and pretty compelling and very incriminating. And anything that he would say could end up being a lie, which would only add a perjury count to the indictment. And uh, when you get a, a letter that's a target letter, it's a warning that the Department of Justice is very close to returning an indictment. In this case, it would be the special counsel, separate and independent of the Department of Justice. And I just want to add that I agree with everything Anthony said. In my years at the Department of Justice, facts and law is what determined what an indictment would say and when it would be issued. So if you get a target letter, it's giving you an opportunity to come and convince a grand jury that you didn't do what the evidence shows, that you have another side to the story. And in this case, there isn't one. If I were his defense lawyer, I would absolutely prohibit him from coming in to testify. Every time he talks, he either admits to another crime um, or ends up creating another civil case, as he has done with Eugene Carroll. So I think it would just not be helpful for him to come in and testify. A target letter does not mean that he will be indicted, and not getting one doesn't mean that you won't be. It's not mandatory. It's not required. But having gotten it, he's had his chance. It expired on Friday. So he has turned down the opportunity. Greg, Lucy, normally I talk with you about the legal case that we're watching out of Fulton County. Today, I want to talk with you about action from the DOJ. Your sense of what special counsel Jack Smith might be seeking from Georgia Governor Brian Kemp. What is it that he can offer to DOJ? I have a pretty good idea because, of course, Governor Kemp became one of Donald Trump's top targets last year and in 2021 after, Donald, after Brian Kemp refused Donald Trump's request for a special legislative session to overturn his 2020 defeat here in Georgia. So he's going to certainly, I can only assume he's going to ask about that phone call that happened in December 2020 between Governor Kemp and, and, and then President Trump uh, demanding that a special session take place. Governor Kemp at the time refused that demand saying, look, it, this would lead to ceaseless litigation and put state representatives, state lawmakers in a very tough position at a time when the runoffs, the Senate runoffs were, were underway in Georgia that resulted in the, the victories from Democratic challengers to Republican incumbents that flipped control of the Senate to the Democratic Party. So I think that's going to be front and center. And of course, that earned Governor Kemp Trump's enduring wrath and led to a Republican primary challenge last year that Governor Kemp easily uh, took care of, easily dispatched. In Enduring wrath indeed. Greg, the DOJ also subpoenaed video of an Atlanta polling site. Remind us why prosecutors are looking into the State Farm Arena. Yeah, this video has become an obsession of Donald Trump's MAGA supporters, of, of uh, the focus of conspiracy theories. It was sele selective footage was shown by Rudy Giuliani at hearings here in Georgia and beyond uh, that purported to show tampering with a vote. None of that is true whatsoever. It's been disproven by Republican officials, by independent reviews, you name it, it has been disproven and led to death threats and other just, you know, horrific after aftermath for the two election staffers were at the focus of this. But this has also fueled a lot of conspiracy theories. Um, and it not only is the January 6th committee looking at this, federal prosecutors are looking at this, and it could be the subject, it could be a focus of the Fulton County probe here in Georgia. So this has gotten a lot of attention, and now it's gotten federal attention as well.